welcome friends. So, now we are discussing the people and partners in the Toyota production system. In our last session, we started discussions about uh, this aspect of uh, Toyota production system and we discussed that uh, how it is very important to develop leadership within the organization. If you have that culture in the organization which can promote successive leaders, then you can also eliminate the waste related to Muri, the waste related to unevenness because of change of leadership idea of a new leader may change the direction of working of the organization, your values may also change and that creates waste related to Muri unevenness and uh, therefore, uh, many a times workers the executives get confused that which path to follow and uh, it is therefore, one important point from the Toyota that uh, we need to develop a system where we have leaders within the organization. And if you have leaders within the organization, you have uh, same philosophy continuing in your organization for years and years. Then only you can have long term vision for the organization. Then only you can eliminate various different types of waste. Otherwise, if you are a leader for a small period of time. So, your interest will be most of the time to achieve short time success and short time success sometime achieved at the cost of long term vision and the Toyota philosophy is just opposite to that, that you sacrifice your short term success for the advantage or for the strengthening of your long term vision of the organization. So, all those things are revolving around people. We discussed in our previous session that people is at the center, whether it is technology, whether it is management, whether it is philosophy, all these things, all the dimensions of the triangle are actually adding value to the people, so that you can create a learning organization. And when we were talking of learning organization, we also discussed the Toyota model of leadership. And uh, in this session also, we will devote some time to further elaborate that model of leadership proposed by Toyota. And in this session, we will also focus on development of exceptional teams. There are always two issues, whether we focus more on development of teams or we focus more on development of individuals. So, development of individual and development of teams are two aspects. So, how Toyota has created a balance between development of individuals and development of teams that also will be discussed in this session. So, the principle on which this particular session is based that is develop exceptional people and teams. So, the principle says that you need to develop individuals and teams who follow the company's philosophy. The company's philosophy is being followed by individuals and individuals make the team. So, therefore, it is uh, important to understand that Toyota has created a unique balance between the development of individuals and development of teams and they have very carefully designed the system that uh, what is the role of individual and what is the role of team, how both supplement each other. Because the unit, the building block of team is individuals, but individual cannot achieve higher level of success, rather individual cannot do 
any organizational objective. So, teams are required and when teams are required, so how teams importance and how individuals importance need to be balanced that is what Toyota has achieved and therefore, this becomes a very interesting principle also that uh, we need to see the growth of individuals, we need to see the growth of teams and uh, individuals and team should be able to follow the philosophy of the organization. And before we go further into this principle of uh, development of uh, individuals and development of teams, uh, we like to go back uh, to that uh, model of uh, Toyota leadership. So, the Toyota leadership model which we were discussing in our previous session. So, uh, it has uh, two dimensions and uh, these two dimensions are based on uh, the communication flow whether it is uh, top to bottom or bottom to up. So, it is uh, uh, top to bottom you are getting instructions from uh, this position to this position. So, that is uh, top to bottom and uh, this is uh, bottom up here uh, you have uh, various people who are contributing to give information to give suggestion to the senior positions. So, team members are giving suggestions uh, to team leaders uh, that is uh, bottom up in top down team leader instructing team members uh, that is uh, the directive or that is a kind of authoritative uh, way of working in the organization. The other aspect on which uh, this classification is being done that is uh, whether you are having a more general kind of uh, expertise uh, you are uh, more like a jack of all trades. So, that is uh, one dimension that you have a general management expertise uh, you are not a specialist in a particular activity. And the second part is so it is more uh, you can say um, generic type of people and here you have in depth understanding of the work that is a specialist. So, you have uh, generic people those uh, who are uh, in our uh, layman language uh, we can say jack of all and these are the specialists who are having in depth knowledge of a particular working area. So, now uh, that is how we classify the leaders in our Toyota literature. Now, on the basis of that you have four type of leaders. Now, these four type of leaders are one is builder of learning organization. So, they are having the bottom up they encourage their employees to give suggestions. So, team members are giving suggestions to team leaders and they are also specialist. So, they can help they can actually demonstrate by doing things through their hands that what is right what is not right. So, they are acting as a facilitator as well as they are also acting as a coach to their team members. So, it is a two way communication from bottom they are taking the suggestions and from top they are mentoring them, they are coaching them, they are guiding them that how to do things in more productive manner. So, that is the one type of activity uh, which is combination of bottom up and specialist. Then you have a top down in top down and specialist combination which is the second uh, label here we just tell our people that what is to be done and how it is to be done. So, you give rules, regulations, procedures, standard operating process for doing a particular task. So, you are more into a, a kind of getting work done from your employees. So, you are a task master you know uh, this is the process and you have defined the process and you are now asking your employees to do or to deliver the work according to that process. So, that is the task master. The third is group facilitator. Group facilitator means you have again a bottom up approach you are involving your employees. So, that they are giving you the suggestions. 
So, you have created a feeling of empowerment and in this because here you see at the bottom you are not a specialist, you do not have that kind of in depth skills. So, therefore, you are creating more motivational environment, you are creating more motivational environment, but you on your own are not able to coach, you are not able to mentor your uh, uh, subordinates. So, that is a more like group facilitator uh, a kind of environment. So, that is uh, the third category of uh, leaders according to this uh, uh, classification. The least effective according to this uh, system, the least effective kind of leadership is the bureaucratic managers that is the least effective uh, uh, approach uh, where neither you are uh, uh, empowering your employees, you are trying to become authoritative, yes this has to be done and at the same time because you do not have any kind of uh, hardcore skills, you are like a generic uh, expert. Uh, so, you are not able to coach them, you are not able to uh, tell them how to do things. So, that is bureaucratic approach, just simply follow the rules. I will not tell you how to do things, but uh, rules are there and you simply need to follow and deliver according to rules. So, that is the least effective kind of uh, uh, approach in this uh, uh, classification. So, Toyota way of doing the business, the Toyota leadership is mostly influenced by the type 1 leaders who are builder of learning organizations. So, if you see this uh, uh, diagram in this uh, we have actually going through all four quadrants, but the maximum presence of this circle is in quadrant 1, where you are uh, influenced by that idea where you are empowering people also, where you are helping them also, you are coaching them also, you are guiding them also. So, it is like a uh, Toyota leader is more like a builder of learning organization, but at the same time Toyota leader has some characteristics of facilitator as well as of the taskmaster and it has least characteristics of bureaucratic manager. So, Toyota leader is a combination of all four types of characteristics. So, you are builder of learning organization, you are a task master, you are a facilitator also as well as you are a bureaucratic manager, but uh, the ratio in which uh, these characteristics are required in a Toyota leader that is very important. So, we require maximum 70 to 75 percent of the uh, first type, then we require for second and third uh, 10 percent, 10 percent each and just uh, 4, 5 percent of bureaucratic approach is uh, ok, when only you are doing some kind of routine activities. So, in that case you can say that uh, follow the rule and deliver according to rules, but uh, uh, it is a very comprehensive way of understanding the leadership in a manufacturing organization and not only manufacturing organization, but in other kind of uh, services and uh, office work also that uh, we need to create learning organization. And uh, since we are discussing right now the individuals and uh, teams, uh, so the learning organization will be created when you have learning individuals and learning teams. So, learning individuals and learning teams will help us in making a learning organization. So, let us see that how those learning individuals and learning teams will be created and for that purpose we need to see that first in this principle we say that we need to develop excellent individual work and at the same time we need to promote effective teamwork. So, in the same line we are saying both the things individual work, excellent individual work and effective teamwork both are required and uh, for that purpose uh, we say this important line that uh, all systems are there to support the team doing value added work. So, 
if uh, you remember this diagram where we have people you have technology you have management and you have philosophy. Now, in this particular case we need to develop this system that is supporting the value added activities with respect to individuals with respect to team. Now, what does it mean that if as an individual I am working in a Toyota plant you meet many people who are working in different organizations. So, they, they say that ok it is good it is good and uh, uh, there is nothing great about the organization you are doing the work uh, routinely nobody is troubling you you get salary on the first of the month uh, you get uh, regular promotions uh, you have a proper system of perks, uh, but uh, still you are not happy with the organization why because the human being is an intellectual person and we will only be happy when we become a learning entity when something is added to us regularly and that essence Toyota understood very well that for creating a good environment good culture we need to add value to our employees to our people to our partner therefore, this people become the center point for the Toyota's work, but teams do not do value added work it says who does individuals do because team is composed of many individuals they make the team. Now, it is important that uh, you all have excellent individuals, but uh, as a team they may not succeed. So, you need to see the compatibility of individuals uh, so that uh, you can put them into a team. If compatibility is not there so, even though they are excellent people, excellent workers, excellent managers, excellent players in their own way, but they may not deliver excellent output as a team rather mediocres those who are not having that high credentials with them, but as a team they may produce much better output, but Toyota says that we need to create the excellent individuals and we need to develop that kind of system around them that this fitting of individual with individual becomes easier. We should be able to develop that environment where we can take help of teams for some other kind of activities and what is that teams can help in coordinating the work. Teams will not deliver but teams can help in coordinating the work it can help in motivating and learn from each other. So, that is more important thing. So, if these three circles are like that these three individuals are like that and you are putting them in a team they will not deliver. So, what is required it is required that these are tightly hold by each other and then as a team they will deliver because now they are supporting each other and when they are supporting each other they are properly coordinating with each other that is the purpose of team. So, when it is a team the purpose of team is to coordinate to learn from each other when we go to our routine management classes in that classes we have a very popular way of teaching that is the case study method. And when we use case method for our classes the one of the important aspect of case method we say is that uh, in lecture method I am teaching you with a experience of let us say uh, 22 years uh, I have that much experience. But when I am teaching with the help of case method and each if there are 40 students in my class and they all have work experience of let us say 2 years each. So, 2 years into 40 that becomes 80 years of work x and then you add my 22 years. So, we all will learn 
with experience of 102 years. So, that is the advantage of team that each one of us bring some experience and then we learn from each other's experience. So, our learning becomes faster or rather we have more things to learn and nowadays it is also important that teams suggest innovative idea even control through peer pressure. So, because you are not individual you are in a teams environment. So, uh, because of peer pressure also many a times uh, your performance uh, and your direction of movement uh, is controlled. If uh, you are an individual, so there are no checks and balances with the help of teams uh, that checks and balances are automatically created. And therefore, if you uh, uh, just hold for a minute uh, go to a very different field of uh, India's rural development. Uh, one of the model that we talk many a time that is self help groups, because self help groups nothing like a team. So, you have created a team who are having similar kind of requirements. These members of SHG they have a requirement of some you can say petty loans 10,000, 20,000 like and now they all are taking the responsibility of each other there is no requirement of collateral. So, each other becomes the collateral for uh, themselves and uh, because of the peer pressure the default rate is uh, really really very much amazing. It is less than 5, 6 percent uh, uh, that is the default rate uh, uh, when you talk of uh, micro financing uh, is self help groups. So, why it is so that is because of uh, this uh, peer pressure. So, that peer pressure is also very important thing in helping superior performance uh, uh, from the team environment. Now, Toyota has established an excellent balance between individual work and group work and uh, that is what we discussed in the beginning of this session also that uh, it is uh, a very challenging task that uh, many a time my interest and my team's interest get conflicts. If you go back to principles of management given by Henry Fiol, in that also Henry Fiol talks of subordination of individual interest for the larger interest or for the organization's interest. So, organization is like team and subordination of individual interest means your personal interest. So, Toyota has created a very interesting balance between the individual excellence and team's effectiveness. So, it says that at individual level we need to create excellence, we should be expert in doing what we are doing, we should have in depth knowledge. So, if you remember that uh, diagram of leadership in that uh, this uh, bottom line x axis was representing two types of categories. One was general management experts and the other were the specialist. So, Toyota promotes these specialists that you should have in depth knowledge in your subject matter, you should have in depth knowledge in your place of work. So, that you can demonstrate your juniors, your subordinates by doing things by your own hands. So, that is the dimension which was promoted by Toyota and when it comes to teams label. So, your excellence is only useful when your team creates something which is of use to the society, which is used to the customers whether it is internal customer or external customer. So, if your group is providing something which is of use to uh, customer internal or external that decides the team's effectiveness. So, it is uh, a very interesting point uh, that uh, individual excellence uh, and team effectiveness are being looked after 
simultaneously uh, at the same level uh, that is how we create balance. You are not saying that uh, this is to be done at the cost of this. So, uh, that is uh, one very interesting point with respect to uh, Toyota production system. Then further it says that while teamwork is critical having individuals work together in a group does not compensate for a lack of individual excellence or understanding of Toyota system. What does it mean that uh, teamwork is important because uh, individuals are not creating output it is team which is creating output. So, teamwork is very critical no doubt in that, but individuals lack of working because teamwork now we are saying is important, but that does not mean that you can expect somebody to perform below excellence in the team. So, teams output is also very important and every individual in the team should be working with the idea of that uh, superior performance with the excellence. So, teams effectiveness only when individuals ability individuals excellence is also there. So, finally, it says that excellent individual performers are required to make up that team should also excel. So, team is composed of individual and here it is important to understand that uh, we cannot compromise the output of team because of uh, uh, people at the team are mediocre. So, they also need to perform at the excellence level then only teams output will become effective for the society. Then another important thing which is uh, to be discussed uh, in this particular context that work groups are the focal point for solving problem. This is very interesting normally the problem solving is done at the top and then the decisions are conveyed to the work groups here it is just opposite to that. So, what it says that in a conventional automotive plant white collar or skilled trade staff is responsible for problem solving. So, those who are sitting in offices they are considered to be problem solvers and uh, things like quality assurance, equipment maintenance and productivity. While in the Toyota shop floor worker groups are the focal point for problem solving. They are considered that uh, those who are facing the problem, those who are actually meeting those situations they are more intelligent about the problem. So, therefore, they should be given the opportunity rather they will be uh, doing the major solution component uh, in this uh, Toyota production system. So, therefore, if you see the working of uh, uh, Toyota system here it is just opposite to your conventional automotive system this diagram is completely reversed. So, now you see the team members these are the team members they are given the top priority they are at the top of the organization uh, and the manager is at the lowest level. So, the flow is just reversed in other automotive plant the diagram is shown like that manager is here and then uh, there are various uh, subordinates under those manager and then team members will be there like this. So, that is uh, the conventional way of uh, assembly operations uh, that uh, from manager to supervisor to group leader to team leader and then finally, uh, team members. But here you see that uh, we have team members uh, then team leaders then group leaders uh, and then assistant manager and uh, manager. So, this flow is giving the strength that uh, individuals are very important and that individuals uh, will create uh, important uh, output for your organization. And then if you also discuss this particular concept uh, in light of various motivational theories that uh, the relation of uh, individuals uh, and teams uh, 
then also there are uh, internal motivational theories and external motivational theories. Some of the popular theories uh, which can be compared uh, like uh, Maslow's need hierarchy theory, then Herzberg's uh, job enrichment theory. If you see those theories and then if you see the external theory, the Taylor scientific management theory, the behavioral modification theory, the goal setting theory in these concepts and the Toyota approach also you will find that uh, how Toyota's approach is almost similar to the various motivational theories uh, which are uh, there in the practice. In our next session, we will discuss about these classical motivation theories and the Toyota way slightly more in detail that uh, what are the similarities and what are the dissimilarities in various motivation theories and how Toyota way supports uh, these different type of uh, uh, motivation theories in our next session. Uh, here we close uh, this session. Thank you very much.